Okay, so we're we're live on YouTube. So hello, everyone. Awesome. Good evening. I have an amazing special guest with us, and I also have set up my Sony ZV-1 camera, so hopefully I don't look at the screen too much, but I want to look at you too. Um, and I'm joined by Kid Poteet. Is that, am I saying your last name correctly? That is correct. Yeah, Poteet. Poteet. I love it. Um, Kid Poteet. And so I'm going to unmute my mic right now so that we can also have this on a Twitter space. So good evening, everyone here on Twitter as well. Oh my gosh. Not cool, <laughs> not cool at all. Um, What's Kid the cat's name? His name is Pinocchio, and he's just going to have to be along for the ride. But hello, everyone on Twitter. This is my first time trying to do a YouTube live stream um, also on Twitter. So uh, we are joined by Kid, and Kid is part of the Polaris Dawn crew, which is amazing. Uh, how has training been going? Training's been a blast. Um, you know, it started about a year ago. A little over a year ago, we, we uh, got the crew together. The announcement was in February, I believe, of uh, 2022. Um, but yeah, we spend about every other week at uh, headquarters, SpaceX headquarters, where their simulator is at, um, working with the crew. It's a kind of a progressive approach to it. Um, you know, we start off with the basics, uh, nominal type procedures, launch, you know, the... Uh, the splashdown, and then uh, we started adding some contingency operations, uh, handling emergency procedures. And then of late, it's the big focus has been the, the EVA, the spacewalk that we have planned. Uh, uh, you know, it flourished yeah. on the, yeah, that's uh, the first commercial spacewalk. So that's the top priority for us. Crazy. Like, are you so excited to be a part of that? Absolutely. You know, someone made a comment the other day. This would be the first time that, uh, so technically when you, bring the entire, uh, entire capsule down a vacuum, uh, we're all participating in the EVA. Uh, right now the plan is two will go outside and, and two will remain inside to monitor systems and all the computers and communi communicate with, uh, with, the, with the ground. Um, but it would be the first time that, that four uh, crew members have participated in an EVA at the same time. So that's wow. pretty exciting. There are so many firsts on your mission. It's crazy. I mean, not only the first commercial spacewalk like we're talking about, but also testing Starlink um, and then some health impact studies. I mean, you guys are doing so many things on, on that mission. You must be just so excited. We are. You know, the, the idea behind the entire Polaris program was to kind of identify some challenges for long duration spaceflight. And, you know, with a partnership with SpaceX, in our own little way, we wanted to contribute um, to their development. You know, they're going from Falcon 9, they're making transition to, to Starlink. And similar to what uh, NASA did with the Gemini pro uh, program, bridging the gap from initial spaceflight to going to the lunar surface with the Apollo program, they did, they'd accomplish a lot of firsts. You know, the first docking, multi-crew, longer duration, higher altitudes. Um, so in, in a very small way, we, we want to contribute to that transition as they make this leap, uh, not only to, you know, longer duration, but, but to uh, Starship as well. So with, with that in mind, you know, the Polaris program is up to three missions. Uh, the first one being the Polaris Dawn. Uh, and then the third one, Jared will command the first crewed Starship mission. Um, and, and so, but, but with this upcoming players done, we, we kind of set four main objectives. First one being uh, the first commercial spacewalk, as you referenced. Uh, right. The second one being testing Starlink from space for the first time. Um, because that's a game changer. You know, with, with communication now, it's ground-based facilities as well as teacher satellites, which are high-demand assets. Um, I, think, I believe uh, Inspiration4 had about 80% coverage. Um, you know, once we add Starlink with laser-based communication, uh, it's going to lower the late, uh, you know, improve latency, increase broadband, um, and just adds a, a third layer of communication, uh, which is obviously going to be, you know, pretty important for long duration. Right. Um, and then we got kind of two more objectives. One's the altitude that we're striving for, and the other one is all the science and research, uh, which we'd be happy to talk about. But there's 40, 40 experiments we got lined up. 40? 40, yeah. We're oh, partnering, I think it's about 25, 26 different organizations, institutions, universities, nonprofits. Wow. But again, that's, those are all. That's yeah. incredible. So, like, 
I'm surprised you even had time to talk to me, first of all. So thank you. <laughs> Are you home all the time? Like, what is your schedule like right now? Uh, it's right now. It's about every other week. Uh, like I mentioned, we spend a lot of time at Hawthorne doing a, a lot of the training for the science and research um, and all the checklist procedures, working together as a crew inside the, the, the buck, the, the capsule trainer. Um, uh, you know, it, it was piecemeal in the beginning, kind of basic skill sets. And now it's starting to incorporate more joint, uh, a larger integration with mission control plane downstairs. Um, and then we just spend some time, uh, you know, for utilizing some specific resources like uh, Johnson Space Center, the vacuum chamber. We went there. We'll be going there soon um, in the coming months for um, vacuum training for or vacuum testing of the suit itself. Um, and then, uh, you know, we go out to Kennedy Space Center for, for some of the launch procedures training. Wow. Um, and I know that you guys have done some like team bonding kind of training so far. So can you walk me through some examples of what you've done so far and kind of what you have left to do? Because I mean, we're getting pretty close, somewhat close to when you're actually going on this mission. Yeah, absolutely. So right now it's, uh, it's frag for this year. Um, it's all based on hitting certain milestones for the development piece of this project because it is operational in nature. Um, uh, so they're working on the suit, they're working on the uh, protocol and the procedures for the actual spacewalk, which is um, a heavy lift for the team itself. But they're they're unbelievable what they've been able to accomplish. Um, there's new iterations of the suit itself every time we go there. Uh, big focus on the mobility, the thermals. Um, so it's it's quite amazing what they've been able to accomplish. Um, we're excited to show the world, so at some point they'll announce it. Yeah, I was going to say that leads into, I think, a question that a lot of people have. You can see it here on the screen. Is there anything that Kid can share about the EVA suits? Um, you know, it's... Uh, <laughs> I'm going to tread lightly. Yeah, sure. Yeah. In, in standard SpaceX fashion, they like to uh, shock and awe uh, when the timing's right. Yeah. Uh, whether that's prior to, prior to, you know, the launch or it's going to be when we're walking out of the, the suit-up room. Um, it's, uh, it, you know, the, the basic prototype or, or framework is based on the IVA suit. Um, so that's where they started from. Um, and then the dedicated team at SpaceX has been working 24 seven to, to develop that. Um, it is an umbilical. Um, so it's connected to, to the spacecraft, um, providing all the gases that we need to sustain life. Um, there are some avionics upgrades, um, some changes to the, to the, to the helmet. Uh, I'll save that for, you know, when it is announced. Um, uh, but it's getting more and more comfortable every time we put it on. Um, and we, we, um, every, every time we go out there, we're, we're getting pressurized we're we're going through the protocol for the EVA. So we're coming more and more comfortable, uh, wearing these suits. Yeah, obviously. I mean, I've never tried on an EVA suit. What can you tell the, the public that's listening about, you know, something you might not expect or something that maybe even surprised you when you're when you're working with these? You know, throughout training, there's been like moments of like, holy shit, this is really happening. Um, I, I think the first time was in the capsule uh, when we were in there for the first time as a crew and they closed the hatch, you know, and we weren't suited up or anything like that. But that was early, that was pretty early on. That was kind of one of those moments, um, being on top of uh, Pat 39 Alpha. Yeah. Um, after the announcement, uh, that was, you know, a certain feeling that you get like, this is really going to happen. Um, and, and being in the suit pressurized. Um, so you, you tried on before you actually get on the capsule just to check fit, look for hot spots, make minor adjustments. Uh, but again, there was one of those moments where we were all in the suits pressurized for the first time um uh, the mobility you would think would be very very restrictive uh right. but they're working through this innovative technology with the with the actual joints and the mechanical uh elements um of what they're designing um and, and as i mentioned they're, they're getting more and more versatile and, and uh agile so um uh, yeah that's just the kind of the big focus at this point 
Well, and another question for you that I don't know if you can answer, um, is there a documentary being filmed for you guys like Inspiration? There is, yeah. They're actually, the same crew. Uh, they're an awesome team that did Inspiration 4, Countdown, on, uh, on Netflix. Um, same DP, same crew team is, is, is filming us um, throughout all the training. Back to your question about what we've been doing. Yeah. Uh, early on, we accomplished a lot of um, uh, the uh, mountain climbing, uh, you know, all these elements are, are to increase risk levels, uh, manageable risk levels, uh, but risk to none the left. And it's, it, the concept is that we put ourselves in these situations where we have to deal. You right. know, there, in space, there is no control, up delete, reset button. <laughs> Whatever happens, you've got to be able to handle the situation yeah. and work as a team. So when you, when you climb a mountain, you know, it takes days. It's an austere environment, you know, you're dealing with weather, dehydration, altitude issues, um, and you're in a confined location. You can't just jump off the mountain. So you got to work together as a team and, and deal with the stressors. Right. Um, so that's the idea behind when we climb Cotopaxi down in Ecuador, similar fashion, fi flying fighter jets. You know, we stick the other crew members, Sarah and Ann on the back seat. They get some stick time. We're still working through some uh, the challenges associated with communication checklist procedures, um, all those things. And we, scuba diving was another um, element. Uh, uh, working on the buoyancy, again, the communication, those challenges. Yeah. Uh, we did the centrifuge, the altitude chamber, all getting familiar with, with some of the sensations that we'll experience um, during the launch as well as during flight. Is there a big uh, kind of test or exercise that you have upcoming that you can tell us about? I would say uh, the longer duration sim sessions that we have planned. Um, we did one for Inspiration 4. Uh, I believe it was the 30-hour sim. So we stuck uh, Chris, Cyan, Jared, and Haley into the sim for 30 hours. Wow. Um, and they went through, you know, uh, entire procedures, uh, more or less, you know, over a day of, of training. Uh, Again, providing one of those environments that uh, you learn a lot about each other. Um, so we're not quite going to, to those. I don't think we have planned a, a 30 hour, uh, but certainly longer duration uh, in our suits, in and out of our suits, because uh, that's part of the concept on and off in the suit when you're on orbit. Um, so you got to get comfortable with the payload, cargo, where everything is at. Right. Um, okay. Familiarity is very important. Um, and here we have a super chat from Bimmer Geezer. Thank you. He wants to know, and a couple of people want to know if Hubble Rescue is a possibility for you guys. So that's a, a current conversation that's going on between uh, NASA, SpaceX, and the Polaris team. Um, it's certainly on the table. Uh, there's a lot to be worked out with that. Uh, but Hubble's a national asset, and you know there's concerns that it might uh, its orbit might decay and eventually re-enter the atmosphere and and then it's no longer a viable resource for scientific research. Um, it's a different spectrum than, than uh, the Webb telescope. So it, it's certainly utilized and, and, and valuable. Right. Um, and if there's a possibility that uh, we can figure out how to dock and, and give it a boost and upgrade some of the technology on there, um, you know, it's, it's a win-win all around uh, because, um, so, so we're, ha we're gonna continue that conversation. Um, but you know, the top priority right now is, is Polaris Dawn as we get ready for this mission. Absolutely. And I was asking you a little bit before we started, can you give us kind of an idea of when your mission will actually take place? So, so right now it's no earlier than, uh, end of August, um, is what we're looking at. Um, you know, it's, it's shifted, uh, to the right every once in a while, just based on the, um, developmental elements of this, um, uh, project. Uh, we want to get it right. That's safety is paramount. Uh, we can't afford to have anything happen on this mission. It would set back our program along with everybody else. Right. Uh, so, you know, we got to mitigate as much risk as we possibly can. Um, the other piece is SpaceX is doing amazing things, you know, with a launch every couple of days, you got to get in the hopper. You got to get on that schedule to figure out where you can, uh, 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 launch a rocket. Um, so there's, there's, uh, working out the schedule. Um, cause when you watch Falcon heavies, you got to do some certain modifications to the, the launch pad itself. 
Um, so, you know, SpaceX is working hard to figure out uh, the best opportunity for, for launching Polaris Dawn. Well, and looking at some of your past interviews, in fact, I think you did this interview about a year ago with Space Eccentric. He was asking you about, you know, how your family felt about this. And you expressed that in the beginning, your wife had some hesitancy about, you know, you being involved in this. Has that changed to more excitement? You know, it's mixed emotions. Um, There's always hesitation. It's it's inherently risky. Uh, Flying fighter jets is is a risky business. So uh, she's no stranger to me doing those types of things, flying for the Thunderbirds, air shows when you're, you know, inches, feet apart. Um, uh, and she's not there day to day to interact with the, uh, the brilliant engineers at SpaceX and NASA. Um, uh, every time you, we interact, we have meetings, we discuss, um, I'm building more and more confidence in what they're able to accomplish. And, and every time they la- launch, you know, Axiom 2, uh, great successful launch on the ISS right now. Uh, it's, um, they've got a great reputation. Uh, I couldn't imagine, um, you know, uh, their progression is going to continue. Uh, and, it's, and it's quite amazing. So they're excited. Um, They'll be happy when when we reunite uh, after Splashdown. Uh, Kids are definitely excited. Um, So, yeah, we have a lot to look forward to. Is all of this happening faster than you imagined? I mean, all of the training and is this just flying by? It is. You know, I think we had a call last night and we were reflecting on where we were and and how far we've come. Um, And, you know, we we take note and go, you know, a year ago, we, we were just getting off a of coat epoxy, which feels like a lifetime ago. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, each, each and every time we, we train, it's just another experience that we have to build that camaraderie, uh, the teamwork, the trust uh, and the respect that we have for each other. So it's, it's been a great ride. Um, and uh, we're looking forward to the mission itself. And you're not, comes. you're not even on the ride yet. <laughs> I know. (laughs) I just, I I still can't get over that first commercial spacewalk. Like that's just going to be so awesome. I'm so excited for you. Um, Yeah. And the whole team. Um, I'm curious, we do have some questions from the audience, but I I did want to know about your kind of vision for a sustainable presence on the moon and Mars. Ooh, that's a great one. It's going to happen for sure. Uh, Just got to figure out. Um, overcome all the challenges that were faced. Right. You know, it's, uh, I think Peggy was pinning on all the astronaut wings, the pins uh, on orbit. You know, was it yesterday or the day before? I think, yeah, I think it was yesterday. Um, and, you know, it was uh, 598, 599, and 600. So the fact that only 600 humans have been uh, in orbit um, is, is pretty amazing in, in how far we've come but how far we need to go. Um, And that's kind of where we focus all our science and research, you know, in a similar fashion, we want to identify certain challenges that humans will face with long duration spaceflight. You know, things like radiation, um, isolation, uh, traveling the distances they're going to have to, to get back to the lunar surface and eventually Mars. Um, You know, the lack of, G's or I mean the lack of gravity sorry uh that we experience up there has a you know direct impact on the human body right uh and there's certain aspects of that that we got to figure out and obviously the the environment of space is a challenge so that's why we've we've identified and solicited those 25 organizations to come up with these 40 experiments um we have certain challenges with the mission itself duration is only five days uh we will bring the capsule down to vacuum so that has a direct impact on certain things that we bring along um, uh, and space and power. Uh, you know, we're in the, the drag capsule. We're not on the ISS. So um, a lot of our, our research is focused on like um, uh, 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 SANS, Space Flight Associated Neuroocular Syndrome. Um, and that's the, the pressure within the spinal fluid uh, can have – a shift and an impact on the ocular nerve, the cognitive functioning, 
Uh, so we're going to participate in, I think we have about five or six of our 40 are dedicated to SANS. Um, and in fact, one of my experiments uh, that I volunteered for oh. just got approved. And what is that so, volunteer for? <laughs> so, so this is the first uh, invasive ICP, intracranial pressure, experiment. Um, oh, wow. The device they're going to surgically implant um, is, was only approved for use for hydrocephalus patients over in Europe. Um, and with private funding and the hard work at Trish and, and, um, and the SpaceX team, I uh, got it approved by the FDA uh, several months ago. I uh, got the uh, IRB approved. And now based on the timeline, um, I can have the surgery implant this device that one end has a little reservoir and the other one has a, a stent, a catheter that goes up into my spine. And it will measure the pressure of that fluid within my spine, which is the same pressure within your brain. So now, bottom line, long story short, we can have direct measurements on orbit versus previously up to this point for SANS, for that associated neuroocular syndrome, uh, you could only test before and after or certain non-invasive, like we're uh, one experiment, we're putting a contact lens on our eye, looks like the bionic eye kind of thing. That, that takes a pressure reading, but it's, it's not non-invasive. It's not a direct measurement, which, which this will um, uh, provide. So okay. hopefully come back with some, some good data that uh, we can make some, uh, continue the research and, and continue to move the needle forward in, in some of these challenges. Yeah, no, and thanks for, you know, volunteering to be a guinea pig for that. <laughs> um, we have some really great questions here in the audience. Um, so let me, let me make sure. Yeah, someone says, no questioning kids, commitment, awesome science, crispy. So yes, absolutely. Um, let me just scroll back up here. There have been so many questions here. Um, other than underwater, are there any other simulators that you train in? Barney wants to know. Great question, Barney. Um, so it's very difficult to replicate microgravity, zero G. Um, you know, and historically, NASA's used the um, parabolic flights, the zero G flights. Um, those are such short durations. We've done a couple of them. Uh, they're such short durations. We tried to do some experiments in them, and it just happened so quick between 20 and 30 seconds of, of this microgravity. Uh, it's hard to really get a sensation. Um, so we've done that, but uh, we've looked at other opportunities. As, as reference, the uh, scuba is one of them. Uh, but but um, uh, uh, SpaceX came up with a really inventive uh, option, very similar to the NASA's Argos. Uh, they came up with this suspension system that provides a certain float mode. Uh, it's akin to like a Cirque du Soleil type harness where, you know, the smallest little pressure will send you in the opposite direction. Uh, something you experience in zero G or what they say. I haven't been yet. I'll let you know. Um, but during the EVA rehearsals, even pressurized, We'll, we'll put these harnesses on that are connected to the ceiling and these devices. And once you're in float mode, all you got to do is push with a pinky or a finger and, and you can start heading in the opposite direction. Wow. Uh, so that's been a, 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 um, a very beneficial training device for us uh, getting ready for the EVA. Cause we can, you know, we go through every single step from the communication, exactly what we're going to say, where we're going to put, um, a hand, a foot, you know, how this whole orchestrated event is going to occur is really important that we're all on the same page. How long is that EVA going to be? Uh, so the whole duration is, is several hours. Mm -hmm. um, and it's all based on uh, the resources that we have available on the Dragon Capital with the, the COPVs, the canisters of oxygen and nitrogen. Uh, that's the limiting factor. Uh, because there's a lot of redundancy. We got to make sure we have plenty of reserve. Uh, but, um, you know, it's going to be a couple hours to go through this entire protocol. Wow. Um, Will wants to know, is there any news that can be shared about the second Polaris mission? Or are we getting ahead of ourselves? <laughs> no, no, it's a, it's a continued effort. Um, 
we're we're constantly meeting about it, having uh, discussions. Um, uh, but it's certainly planning at this point, uh, coming up with various solutions, options. Uh, our vision, goal, uh, and objectives ultimately remain the same. We want to continue uh, to advance the needle and push the envelope on space exploration. Uh, how best to accomplish that, uh, we still have a lot to learn on the Polaris Dawn mission. And I guarantee you some of the things we'll accomplish, uh, whether it's during the EVA, uh, we will continue to build upon that in mission number two. Uh, it will be aboard a, a Falcon 9 uh, and Dragon 2. Um, uh, but otherwise, we haven't really specified exactly what we're going to look to accomplish on that mission. Um, and then obviously the third one will be Starship. And, and we have a lot to learn about uh, Starship. Um, but ultimately, that will be crude. And, you know, according to Elon, we'll be launching that every Every three day, every day. Right. Well, and are you going to be on all three of the Polaris missions? Uh, crew hasn't been identified. Um, I, I will thought. certainly play an uh, advisory role. Um, yeah. Yes. Support where I can. Double check. Um, <laughs> sure. I mean, you probably would want to be on all of them, right? <laughs> <laughs> wink, wink. Um, uh, St. Miles wants to know how much space time have you logged? Zero. I thought zero. Yeah, I, I have not been up. Jared will be the only one. Um, he will be. What this will be the uh, first. Depending on the timing of the launch, he could be the first um, astronaut to to have uh, flown in Dragon twice. Is that uh, but, cool to have Jared's experience and just kind of ha him having done it before? Does that help you guys? Absolutely. I, you oh, wow. know, caveat this, this, what I'm about to say with Sarah and Anna, proven, experienced, uh, exceptional engineers at SpaceX with a great background and, and lots of training. You know, Sarah taught Jared how to be an astronaut. Um, she continues to provide that, those roles and responsibilities at SpaceX um, training astronauts. Anna, she writes the protocol for uh, contingency procedures. Um, uh, they're invaluable resources going through this training. And then Jared, you know, if, if it's anything uh, directly applicable to experience in space, it's like we all look to Jared and go, okay, what do you, what do you remember about the launch? What do you hear, you know, two minutes prior? Uh, what are those sensations? You know, I asked them yesterday or during the Axiom 2 launch. I'm like, once they retracted, I felt like the rocket was swaying. I'm like, hey, did you sense that sway prior to launch? And he's like, absolutely. Um, so it's just the, those types of experiences that he has. Right. Besides the fact that he's a brilliant dude. Um, I'm definitely the weak link. I'm, I'm bringing up the rear, uh, trying to hold my, <laughs> hold my own with this, this crew. Hey, you called yourself the weak link in Kevin's interview with you, and you're a mighty strong weak link. Um, to, I mean, you have plenty of experience in the Air Force. You grew up in New Hampshire, right? Yeah, 20 years flying fighters, it definitely have helped. Um, yeah. You build a certain mindset, uh, ability to kind of manage risks, um, handle you know, that, uh, those types of stressful environments. Um, right. so in a way, I, I, I hope that helps. Even though you've had all that experience and been in very stressful environments, like, is there still, you know, a human part of you that's a little nervous? I mean, I, I feel like you're probably so excited and confident, but it, it seems like it'd be normal to feel a little nervous. Ab absolutely. I am, uh, Full confession, I'm terrified of heights, and I, I'm motion sickness. Oh, no. <laughs> um, I'm terrible in Ubers. Um, thankfully, motion sickness doesn't directly relate with the space adaptation syndrome. Um, uh, I overcame it with flying fighter jets. Um, uh, but, yeah, there's, there's, there's apprehensions, but uh, I have full faith and confidence in, in what SpaceX is doing and my crew. I cannot wait. To, to strap in 
uh, you know, in the coming months and, and go from zero yeah. knots at, at one G to, to zero G 17,500 miles an hour, you know, within a couple minutes. So that's going to be cool. Let's see. Oh, um, someone's saying that they don't hear me on the Twitter live stream. I'm not sure why that is because my mic is on, but this was this was an experiment on Twitter too. So hopefully it is working. Um, yeah, um, it was a first for you. Yeah, we're 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 all. <laughs> when you were saying you're on East Coast time right now, are you living? On no, I'm actually at Colorado. Oh, okay. So, so I'm in uh, I'm in Monument, Colorado, just north of uh, Colorado Springs, just south of Denver. But you're doing training in Hawthorne. Yep, yep. So we're all over. Jared's in uh, Pennsylvania. He's right. on the road constantly, so he's all over. Um, Anna's down in Houston because uh, her husband Anil is a NASA astronaut, so he's he's training at Johnson Space Center. And then Sarah and Lewis, they live uh, just outside of Hawthorne, in LA. So how often are you guys going to Hawthorne? So it, it's about every other week. Um, we, we spend at the at training there. Wow. For some reason, I thought that it would be like even more than that. No? Yeah, you know, it, over the course of a year. Um, and there are times it, it ramps up. And then there are other times it kind of, but it averages out about every other week or so. Right. What do you, I guess, what are you most excited for? I mean, I feel like I can guess, but <laughs> I, I, I think there's, there's three elements I'm really looking forward to. Actually, no, there's tons, but what comes to mind is obviously the launch. Um, I love the sensation of pulling G's. Um, I think that's going to be a kick in the pants. Um, uh, you know, that second stage separation going to zero G um, and peering outside the window, seeing Earth from, from that altitude, you know, that one of those objectives is to, to uh, achieve that um, highest Earth orbit, uh, 1,400 kilometers. You know, originally for Earth orbits, uh, Gemini 11 back in 1966, 1,368 kilometers. So hopefully we can achieve that 1,400, which is the lower portions of the Van Allen belt. So seeing Earth from that altitude is going to be quite amazing. And then obviously splash down and reuniting with, with the family. Yeah. Um, I, I definitely will look forward to that. I'm sure the experience will change you, but I, I'm guessing that already just being selected for this has probably changed you in a way. Yeah, I, absolutely. I mean, any experiences I, I believe change us. Yeah. Uh, some for the good, some for the bad. Um, but how we deal with it, how it changes our character is important. Um, but we all got to stay grounded. You know, this is, I'm blessed to have this opportunity. Um, things happen for a reason and I got, we got to do good in everything that we do. Um, that's why we're so focused in on these objectives that we've set forth. Um, we don't want to go up there and just take pictures and selfies and uh, right. we have a mission. We're very dedicated to what we want to accomplish. Um, and, in, in some way, we hope to contribute um, to what we need to accomplish to, to further space exploration. Yeah, it, I mean, you guys have a lot of, you know, firsts that you're trying to accomplish, but you might as well try to do as many as you can because it's not so often that, you know, we get to go up there. So. Absolutely right. And right now we're having a lot of discussions on Starlink. Um, it, it's still many unknowns. Um, you know, it's, it's a test. Yeah. Uh, it's never been done before. You know, right. there's doing modifications to the trunk to add, to add uh, the terminal. Um, so hopefully it works. If it does, you know, we're going to use and abuse it as much as we possibly can. Um, so uh, we want to find out all the, you know, the bugs and, and press its capabilities uh, just to see uh, what we can accomplish. And I want to shout out John really quickly and say thank you for the super chat. Thank you to everyone who's watching. We have about 200 people at least on YouTube, less on Twitter, but I'm not sure if my uh, audio is working. <laughs> I want to check that right now. Um, yeah, so uh, one other thing that I want to go back to that I saw in your interview with Kevin is you were saying that you actually weren't this, like, perfect student. And I bring that up because – 
I want to inspire people who are listening right now. Uh, look at where you are. You're selected as the mission pilot for the Polaris Dawn crew. And you yourself admitted that you didn't really like school that much and you weren't yeah. like super focused or, you know, so can you maybe um, just give some inspiration to people that think that what you're doing is like an unattainable dream? I, absolutely. So um, high school, I was a terrible student. Um, I was an athlete. Um, uh, I barely graduated high school based on my academic performance, struggled to get C's and D's, um, just wasn't a focus priority of mine. But I got recruited to go run cross country and track at the University of New Hampshire. Um, and honestly, that's, that's the only way I got into college. Uh, even once I was there, um, I struggled. Um, I came across a program, it was called Outdoor Education. So yes, I spent four years, my classes were uh, scuba diving, rock climbing, winter mountaineering, whitewater rafting, Nordic skiing, very few academic type um, classrooms. Uh, and the idea is, is experiential learning. So you're given some basic skill sets and you go try it. You apply them and then you come back and you reflect, you know, what did I learn? What did I screw up? What could I change? What could I do better? And then you go back out and you apply it again. Uh, and that was the focus. And, and that really clicked with me, visual learner, hands-on kind of thing. Um, I, I cannot sit in a classroom and absorb um, tons of, of information and then later in life to apply it. It just wasn't me. Um, so thankfully there was that program, Outdoor Education. Still by the you know, skin of my teeth, graduated. In fact, my final grade in college, it was a D minus in psych. Oh, wow. um, but I did, I did really well in ROTC. Uh, I got uh, a pilot slot uh, after commission uh, and then just applied myself because I wanted to be the best fighter pilot I possibly could. Um, so I pursued, you know, each and every next level throughout your career, went to fighter weapons school, which is the Air Force version of Top Gun. Um, uh, and I just, I really applied myself, used those tools I learned in outdoor education to learn how to fly. Um, so I certainly wasn't that stellar student and I, I really didn't have my set sight sets on test pilot school, you know, let alone being an astronaut, very inspired by it. Mo the original Top Gun came out in the eighties and the movie Right Stuff, big fan favorite of those two. Uh, but I never dreamed I could, you know, go to space someday. Those were the top pinnacle specimens with uh, aeronautical engineers, astrophysicists, uh, cream of the crop, because they have the ability to narrow it down. Right. You know, once this industry opened up with commercial space exploration, it kind of flipped it on its head, you know, and, and we, we experienced this during Inspiration 4. And it wasn't about... How can we disqualify certain individuals? It's like we've picked them and then trying to figure out how to qualify them. You know, if there was some uh, health or medical challenge, how could we make accommodations to give everyone or more people that type, those types of opportunities? And that's, you know, that's ultimately what we're trying to do. Uh, break down those glass ceilings and open up the doors. Yeah, I mean, does that blow your mind that you are now an astronaut or going to be shortly here? Like, did you ever think you'd make it here? No, no. Um, sometimes my family probably wishes <laughs> I was retired. Um, but, you know, it's it will. It's kind of surreal at times, and and I'm just uh, blessed to have this opportunity. So, we're certainly going to make the most out of it. Absolutely. Um, and sorry, the cat, if I lock him out, he'll be loud and scratch. So I'm <laughs> so unprofessional. Um, oh, no. You said you have an experienced wait list. I, I, for some reason, assumed that for sure you've done a zero G flight. You have not. No, we, we did. Uh, we did two uh, zero G flights, um, okay. one during Inspiration 4 and one during. Um, so it's just we didn't do dedicated training during it. It was more just to experience it. But you um, felt weightless at least for 30 seconds, right? And I loved every minute of it. I, yeah. 
I, I didn't know what I do to expect, I guess. I didn't really give it much credence. Um, I kind of felt like it was going to be a novelty kind of thing, but I loved it. I had a blast. I had a grin from ear to ear. Well, um, and I'm asking a lot you, because I'm about to do that in ah! on a flight. Um, and so w through the Moondow Zero G competition. And so I'm curious, do you think I'll feel sick on it? <laughs> I, you know, um, I ended up wearing one of the uh, scope patches. I did not get, you know, I'd say over half got nauseous okay um i don't think anyone blew chunks on the first flight oh, a couple God. did on the second oh no but um but uh i wore that you know i mean are you familiar with the scopamine no it's a it's a it's a motion sickness medication oh um, so strong i wore it stronger than dramamine ah Okay. Um, it's not quite the top tier, but it's, it's kind of where it's somewhere in the middle. Um, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't get any sensation of motion sickness at all. Um, a lot of people did. Um, I think, you know, the advice that they give you is, is you'll, you'll be laying like once you're on or on orbit, once you're, um, at altitude. Right. Right. I think the, the Delta is like between 30, well, thirties, 35,000 down to 15,000, back up to 35,000, 15. Um, before you do that first uh, parabola, they have you lay down. And they're like, just while we accelerate and do this dive, stare at a speck, some spot on the wall, and don't move your head. You know, something very similar to what they tell you, you know, on orbit. Yeah. Launch, keep your movements very minimal. Uh, and that prevents just confusion. So um, in your brain, your ear. Are you going to wear that patch on your launch? I'll try something. We, we try different uh, medications just to see what works. You know, some make you drowsy. Yeah. Uh, we, we need to be alert. And, and so uh, we'll try different things just to see the uh, effects of them. Phenergan, scopamine, dramamine, all these different types. Yeah, that is yeah. so cool. I'm so excited for you. I just, I feel like this is such an honor to talk to you because what you're about to do <laughs> is historic. It really is. Yeah. It really is. I mean, not just the commercial spacewalk, but the testing of Starlink um, and all of the, you know, health kind of experiments that you're going to be doing up there. It's it's all, you know, stepping stones to the next big thing. And, um, and I'm really, I'm really excited for you. This is really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you have kids, by the way? I got three. I got a, a 17, a 15, and a 13. What do Girl. they think of dad doing this? And are they interested? Do they want to follow in your footsteps? Um, my son does. The youngest, uh, Logan, is very interested in, in space and SpaceX and being an engineer. Um, he, they all have the brains for it. Uh, they didn't, thankfully, they, they um, follow the footsteps of, of their mom. She's the smart one in the family. Um, uh, but yeah, they're, uh, they're excited. Um, yeah. But they're, uh, they're ready to get their dad back too. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're all excited for you. And I want to thank you for spending time with us on the Tuesday or Wednesday. No, it's Tuesday. It's so hard. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have the same problem? All right, good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, is there anything else that you wanted to say before I let you, you know, maybe get back to your family and enjoy? <laughs> no, we got to get the camper ready. We're heading up to uh, Breckenridge to go take the Airstream up and test out my Starlink. Cool. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, but no, we're just, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, we appreciate everyone's, uh, support. Um, it's a big endeavor. Um, and we couldn't do it alone. So. We appreciate everyone following along. Yeah, we're we're all, you know, trying to live vicariously through you. And it's really exciting. <laughs> I, I hope that I can be there in person to cover the launch because I've gotten NASA press credentials a few times now. And so um, yeah. I definitely will plan to be there if, you know, if all works out. Yeah. So Absolutely. We'd love, We'd love to have you. After the experience, because I think that's when everything's fresh in your mind. And yeah. Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you so much, kid. I You're really welcome. appreciate it. I'll let you get back to your evening. And um, yeah, thank you.
Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you. Awesome. All right. Well, have a great evening. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Ellie. All right. Okay. All right, everyone. So I'm back. Um, thank you for sticking with me. I still don't know if their Twitter audio is working. So if someone could just take a look on Twitter right now. Um, someone was saying that there was an audio issue, but I've been having kind of to juggle too many things doing the interview. Um, I actually, if you notice, the camera quality is much better because I set up my Sony ZV-1. So instead of using my built-in camera on the MacBook Pro, I am using the Sony ZV-1. But because of that, I'm actually looking kind of off to the side. This is what it would look like normally. So trying to read comments, trying to interview, you know, the mission pilot, <laughs> the Polaris Dawn crew. And my dang cat is really being bad right now. So I'm so sorry. The reason that I keep the door open is because otherwise he's going to scratch. So I don't, I'm going to have to figure this out. It's all a work in progress, but it sounds like, uh, you know, according to, uh, okay, still no Twitter audio. So, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Ugh. I might, maybe, I how about this? We're going to lock him out and we're going to see if you can hear him. Because you guys don't mind helping me troubleshoot. All right. <laughs> it's like, I, he's jumped on the table so many times. I'm so sorry. Um, okay, so I'm going to end the Twitter space because apparently there's no audio, which is really frustrating. Um, that's unfortunate, but that's all right. We're still live on YouTube because I wanted to talk to you guys. Um, thank you for watching that interview. I was trying to set up an interview with someone from the Polaris Dawn crew and a uh, kid was able to do that interview tonight. Uh, the same time that I had planned to live stream kind of a space news update. And so I thought that you guys would really appreciate that interview. Um, I think that what, what he's about to do is incredible along with the other three crew members. So, um, so I hope that you enjoyed that. Um, no Twitter audio. It's a bummer. So we're not on Twitter anymore. We're just on YouTube. I'm going to have to figure out the, the Twitter thing. I was trying to, live stream on the Twitter space as well as YouTube, but at least YouTube is good to go. Um, another announcement that I wanted to make is that I am heading back to Florida. So I haven't taken a trip um, by plane. I, I did go to the Starship launch, obviously, but I haven't taken a trip since uh, I broke my leg. So it'll be fun to be back on a plane. And I'm going to be in Orlando from June 2nd to June 6th. Why am I going? Well, I got NASA press credentials again for the um, SpaceX CRS-28. This is a resupply mission. Uh, so that is on June 3rd. That is a Saturday. So booked my flight. I'm really excited to head back to Florida. I know a lot of people in Florida and I'm actually planning a meet and greet. And I, tw I think I tweeted about this. Um, I had a couple of people email me, but I'm thinking of doing a meet and greet Sunday, June 4th at 5.30 p.m. at Pier 220 in Titusville. Pier 220 has great food. It's right there near the Max Brewer Bridge. And I have been there several times. And so I would love to meet up with some of you guys. So if that's something you're interested in, just know that I'll be in the Florida area again. And I'm looking forward to it because... Um, mainly because I want to finish what I started. And what, it, what I mean by that is I went for the crew six launch and it got scrubbed and I didn't stay for the actual launch. So I was in the press site. I gave you guys kind of a behind the scenes tour of the press site. If you guys remember watching that at all. Uh, but then I came back here to Austin for Tesla investor day. And then I broke my leg two days later. So, um, Cue the cat scratching. You might start to hear it now. So um, for that reason, I've never actually seen, well, actually, I have seen a launch from the press site because we were able to go back right after it scrubbed for that Falcon 9 launch. But that was the one that I didn't turn around in time. So I guess I still really haven't seen a launch because I was kind of live streaming and, you know, just babbling too long. And that delayed sound when it finally got to me, maybe you've seen the video, I turn around and I go, oh, wow, that was not planned, by the way, at all. Um, so, yeah, so there's just some 
kind of updates. I will be going back to Florida. I'm really excited for that. Um, obviously, I'm excited for the next Starship launch, but we're just not sure exactly when that is going to be. So, um, and good. You guys don't hear the cat? What does the cat say? Nothing. Nothing. I want him to say nothing. It's actually really frustrating when he jumps on me because he gets his fur everywhere and oh gosh. Okay, well, that's good. So from now on, I'm sorry, we probably won't have any more cat cameos because I think, I think it's really unprofessional, but I thought the scratching would be worse. So won't have to deal with that issue anymore. Um, <laughs> apparently, I was, let's see. Okay, so Michael says you can definitely see a difference in video quality with the Sony ZV-1. You guys, I'm sorry that I didn't do this sooner. This was actually fairly easy to set up, but sometimes we don't do things for a long time, at least... I don't do things because I think it's going to be way harder than it actually is. I had to update the firmware on this Sony ZV-1 so that I could stream with a USB cable. But now I'm going to do this every single time. This is awesome. And I'm glad that you guys noticed a difference. I definitely noticed a difference. Um, so I'm glad that you like it. Um, but yeah, I, I had planned to do kind of more of a space news roundup update, but I have been preparing for my interview with Kid all day. Um, looking at some of his background. I also was on a podcast earlier. I also, before that, was doing physical therapy. So um, I still want to try more of that dedicated format of a live stream with some of the space news of the day, but I feel like it's kind of incomplete today, so I would rather try it a different day. However, um, I thought that that interview with Kid was just an amazing opportunity and something that I've been kind of emailing behind the scenes for it to work out. So uh, I'm really excited um, to hopefully even see that myself in person to cover how cool would that be to come full circle and interview kid now in May and then uh, be able to cover the launch. So I think that that will definitely, definitely happen here. Um, he says no earlier than August. Sounds like it could be the fall, but that's all right uh, because this is my full-time job and I will be there <laughs> no matter what. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, Let's see. Let me just read some of your guys' comments. You guys are giving me some tips for my zero G flight, which will also probably be in the fall. It was supposed to be like June 9th out of Houston and uh, they're having some pilot shortage issues. So unfortunately it's delayed, but that gives me a little bit more time for my leg to heal uh, while I've been making massive improvements with my leg. I've definitely not completely normal yet. One of the things that I've been really proud of and happy this week is that I've been able to ride my bike. So I rode four days this past week, six miles each time, which normally is not a lot, but for like my leg and under three, I decided to have a little bit more time to recover before I do this. However, um, you know, you don't really need to be in the best shape to do the zero G flight. So that's, that's reassuring. Um, yeah, some of you guys are saying that maybe my cat muted the Twitter. I looked and it said that the mic was on, so I don't think it was him, but I don't know. He was causing tons of problems, and I'm really sorry about that. And it sounds like you guys really like the new camera. So I think that the um, I think the next thing would be, uh, if, you, if you see me looking over here, that's where my screen is. It's, uh, I'm reading your comments, and then I'm looking back into the actual camera lens. So... That will be the next thing, but I just did this today and I'm, I'm really happy that I did. Um, I'm reading some of your guys' comments. Yeah, on Florida. So yeah, June 3rd is the launch and then June 4th is when I'm thinking about doing that meetup. And I will be bringing some swag to the meetup. So I have some amazing t-shirts. Um, these are my 420 Starship launch t-shirts. I'm going to bring some of these uh, and I'm going to bring some other things. So hopefully, you know, we can have a fun kind of raffle thing. Um, and I love Pier 220. Hopefully we'll see some dolphins. But if you guys haven't seen these shirts, these are made uh, with the help of my friend Scott Carr. And they say first launch 420 2023. Oh my gosh. So my phone is on silent, but it goes to the computer. I'm sorry, guys. This is what happens when we do things live. They just, things happen. Um, 
but yes, I'm going to be bringing some swag. So I'm really excited for that. And I'm just excited to like get back to normal. Um, you know, I obviously took a trip for the Starship launch, but I would call it fa far from normal because I still couldn't even carry groceries and I was on crutches. So really looking forward to being able to travel solo independently and, um, you know, uh, cover, cover a launch from the NASA press site. In fact, I wanted to ask you guys while I have you here, um, is there something when I'm there covering it from behind the scenes at the NASA press site? I gave you guys kind of a little tour before, but is there something that you want me to look for or just learn more about um, from the actual, you know, media area of the NASA press site? Let me read some of these. Yes. Um, Tin Man, thank you for being my moderator. And he says, if you have any video ideas, shoot me an email. My email is right there on the screen, eliana.sheriff at gmail.com. You guys give me some great ideas. I apologize if I can't do all of them because I am one person. And I do not have a team. A lot of people seem to be surprised by that. Um, but it is just me. Um, let's see. Okay, good. Bimmer Geezer says he's not saying that I'm unprofessional, but it's like sitting with a good friend having a warm chat. So yeah, hopefully you guys feel like we're just chatting. Um, this is casual and this is really fun. And it's been just a great experience. In fact, I was interviewed just before this on a local Austin podcast, Boom ATX. So I'll, I'll be releasing that interview when they're ready with it. But just kind of the journey of, you know, how I got to where I am with Ellie in space uh, has been really interesting. And um, I'm just I'm just really honored that you guys like my space coverage. And I'm here to provide more of this um, for you guys. So it sounds like you're enjoying the live stream. Ricker, thank you for being here for the live stream. I'm glad you think it's great. Um, oh, this is an interesting idea. Put a monitor dedicated to chats above the cam. That's Yeah, that's a good idea, actually. Maybe I should get a double monitor. Probably should do that. Um, yeah, Jeff says, amazing interview. Thank you for bringing us along. Yeah, I, you know, I'm surprised. I, I don't think Kid has a crazy amount of followers on Twitter. Not that that means anything, but it's like, he's the mission pilot for the Polaris Dawn crew mission. Like that is so cool. And to, to be able to be, you know, on the first commercial spacewalk, uh, what, what a, what an exciting adventure that will be for him. Um, what does this mean? How, how about a tile? I'm not sure what you are. Oh, are you saying that you want, tiles in the raffle no so i'm actually not the one with like the the big tile that we're talking about joe tagmeyer found half of a heat shield tile tile from the starship launch i found a tiny little chip so yes i found this um on the beach it's very small but it still counts and some people were saying that you know joe should sell his tile no way like even this chip i'm keeping this forever this is this is history but you can see some of the sand on it and even like weeks after the starship launch this was still washing up on the beach like that's incredible maybe i should have stayed a little bit longer but people were still finding little chunks and pieces of the heat tiles weeks after the starship launch so that that's really interesting to me. Um, some of you guys saw that picture that Joe took and a picture of me with a much bigger heat tile and SpaceX did reach out to Joe. Um, and it sounded like they wanted the tile back, but we ended up giving them sort of a geolocation. So I don't know if you know this, but on your iPhone, if you take a picture, you can look up exactly where that photo was taken. So, we sent that information to SpaceX and they said, thank you. And that was it. So we got to keep that portion of the heat tile, which is pretty awesome. I think they just wanted to know where it was um, or where it was found rather than actually take it back. So, and thank you for the super sticker. I appreciate you guys watching this live stream. Live streams are really fun for me because I get to talk to you guys um, live and interact with you and you guys have great ideas. You have great questions. 
In fact, you guys helped me do the interviews, which is really cool. Um, you know, some of those questions that you guys had for kid, I didn't have those as questions. So I really appreciate you guys. Um, <laughs> I really appreciate you guys interacting with me. And the other, the other thing that I want to show you um, is this piece of the pad. So two of my friends that I met on the trip down to Starbase for the launch stayed at before I left. I left before they had the road open, but they stayed and they, you know, took pictures near those massive craters that were created and they were actually collecting pieces of the concrete. So they sent this to me in the mail. And I want to say that I mistakenly said that this was the Fondag. Um, it is not. It is concrete. Um, and the Fondag, I learned from Zach Golden with CSI Starbase, has those little kind of metal pieces, wire looking pieces in it. So this is not Fondag. Um, I do not have genuine Fondag. But I put that at the end of the piece. And so it didn't seem like too many people called me out on it. But I will self-correct give myself a little community notes here and say that this is not Fondag after all, but it's still pretty cool that it was part of the first Starship launch and that this was actually one of the pieces. In fact, another little souvenir, I'm just giving you guys a little show and tell here, is this Starbase water bottle that an employee gave me. So Starbase Gateway to Mars. Um, yeah. So we have a lot of cool swag. I feel like I'm, I have so much swag and I'm very thankful. A lot of people send me stuff and I really appreciate that. Um, while you guys are here on the live, um, let's see here. <laughs> okay. Charlie says, don't forget to bring some fat guy shirts. I actually have several 2X and 3XL shirts. So I'm bringing several different sizes of shirts and some of them are, you know, 3XL. So if that's something that, you know, fits you, that's great because I have a lot of them and I will be bringing different sizes to my meetup. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, yeah, you want to know, Tank Watcher Vince wants to know if I have weighed this little tile chunk. I have not, but it is extremely light. I mean, I have like a little scale that I could weigh it. Um, I could do that if you wanted to, but it's really, it's super light. Like it kind of feels like styrofoam, um, but it's not quite styrofoam, but um, very light, much lighter than I expected it to be. So um, yes, what was I gonna say? I feel like I was gonna tell you guys something. Oh yeah. so. Some of you guys have been sending me stuff to my UPS box, which is awesome, by the way. Like, thank you so much for people who have sent cards of support after I broke my leg. People have sent me gifts, and that's been really cool. But some people are sending gifts anonymously, and I don't really know who they're from or who to thank. And one of the most, I would say, interesting gifts that I got um, was someone sent me a bunch of knives. <laughs> Like they sent me four U.S. Space Force knives. So they're U.S. Space Force uh, certified, but they're like knives. And that was just, I was surprised to get that. So thank you to whoever sent me four knives. Also, I'm surprised <laughs> that I got four knives. I'm not sure what that means. Um, but uh, yeah, so if you send me something, please like tell me who you are because I want to be able to thank you. But um, to, to the people who have sent me stuff in the mail, I've had some very generous fans and I really appreciate that. Um, and also, no, I did not put my address on the internet. Some people thought that that was my actual address and don't worry, I am not that naive. So thank you to people who have been sending me stuff in the mail. I very much appreciate this. <laughs> uh, yes, yes. So Anyway, if you guys enjoyed that, please make sure to like this video and share it if you would like to. Um, it was great to talk to Kid. Uh, I'm really excited for the mission and so many of the other launches uh, coming up. So I'm really excited too to go back to Florida. So if you want uh, more details on that meetup, you can send me an email. Um, in fact, I'll put it in a banner right now. Let's see, how do we do this? Create a banner. Here's my email, eliana.sheriff at 
gmail.com ad banner. Woo. Cool. So that's my email. Um, yeah. Thank you guys for watching. I hope that you guys enjoy these live streams. Like I said, I intend to do more of these because I think that they are pretty fun and it would be great to have more kind of co-hosts, um, or guests. Uh, let's see. Someone says, oh, you guys are saying, no, don't stop the live. Some people are saying perfect time for East coast. Um, Camera upgrade, now mic upgrade. So I do have a mic that, hold on. This is like actually a little low key embarrassing that I have these things and I'm just not using them. I don't know why I, I, I make things extra complicated for myself, but since you guys don't want me to hop off the live, let's see if this, oh, I don't know if I have to actually like, I probably have to, set this up here. I'm not, I'm not sure if I can just plug this in and it'll work. Let's see. Does this work? Did anything change with the mic? Did anything change? Cause I plugged it in. Um, bum, 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 bum. let's see, just plug it in. Well, okay. I'm about to change it cause it's still on default MacBook pro. So now I've changed it to the mic. Tell me if you guys can hear me. It's changed now. And this is a fee fine, fi fine mic. You have to switch it. Do you hear, do you hear anything different yet? You may have to change it in options. So you guys, can you hear me anymore or no? Yes, we hear you. Okay. Okay, what about this? Do you hear that? <laughs> not different. Okay. So that's the next thing I have to troubleshoot with. You hear it? Any tapping? No tapping. I'm reading the comments. Anyone here? Jack, you hear the tapping? Okay. No tapping. All right. So I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to troubleshoot that next. No tapping. All right. Well, the bottom line is that I have one and I don't know why I haven't been using it. So, um, Yes. So that'll be, that'll be the next upgrade that you guys can look forward to. Luckily I have it in my studio. Um, and yeah, if you guys have any other ideas while I'm in Florida of stories that I could cover, please also give me those ideas because I have a few days there and I'll try to round up as many interviews as I can. Um, and yeah, that's, that's all I can think of for right now. Um, I'd like to do, the actual thing that I intended to do, which is like a news update, but then the interview with kid came, uh, available and obviously I wanted to take advantage of that. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Thank you for watching. I hope that you have a great evening. Um, and yeah, I'll let you guys get back to what you're doing and thank you so much for joining again. Please tell your friends about Ellie in space. Please share the videos, like, and subscribe. Um, Subscribing on YouTube is completely free. We are almost to 70,000 followers. So let's make that happen. Um, I'm trying to hit 100,000 followers by the end of the year. I think it's completely achievable and I need your help to do it. So um, thank you for, okay, yeah. This will be, be the next track down Tori Bruno and do a ULA interview. Great idea. Um, I would love to interview Tori. I'd obviously love to interview Elon. I'd love to interview even Jeff Bezos. Um, so yeah, I have some, and, and Gwen Shotwell. I mean, I have, I have a list of people that I really, really, really want to interview. So, uh, stick with me because I'm going to make these things happen. I've already made a lot of things happen that I didn't think were possible. Just being honest. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and okay, someone says plug the mic into the Sony ZV-1. Okay, well, I think there might be an adapter needed for that. So we will get into that later. John Krause, he was someone I was thinking of today uh, for an interview. I would love to interview John. Um, he's not following me on Twitter, so I don't have access to his DMs. But if someone has access to John Krause or has a way that I can get in, in touch with him, um, I'm guessing he lives in Florida. I'm not actually sure where he lives, but I would guess it's Florida. So 
if someone knows him and wants to help me set that up, that would be amazing. Um, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Uh, yeah. He, best photog. He, he does great work. Um, and yeah, well, thank you guys. Um, I keep saying, um, sorry. I know better than that. I'm reading, I'm reading comments. Let's see. Thanks, Ellie from New Zealand. If, if I had nerd friends, I would get them to watch. My other friends are not interested in space, even with Ellie. Seriously, we got to get more people interested in this stuff. How about Tim Dodd? Well, it's funny that you say that because I did interview Tim Dodd in September of last year. So I have an interview with Tim Dodd that I think I waited about seven months after initially contacting him for, which is kind of funny. Um, and he, we did it like in a parking lot. So it was kind of funny because he texted me and he's like, Hey, I have a little downtime before we hit the road. They were driving Luna from Florida to California. And I'm like, okay, I'll drop everything and meet you in a parking lot. I don't care. So we did do the interview in a parking lot. Um, and, uh, I thought it went pretty well. Tim has so much charisma. He's such a nice guy. He's funny. Like, Tim's awesome. And I can't wait for him to obviously go on the Dear Moon mission, which will be a few years from now. So, uh, you know, maybe even longer than they projected, but um, would love to interview him again. Um, but yeah, if you guys want to help me get some of these interviews or you have connections, let me know. Obviously, I'm willing to fly places. I'm willing to do interviews in person. It's funny that you bring up Lex Friedman Pierce because Lex Friedman lives here in Austin. Lex has interviewed Tim Dodd, uh, who I've interviewed as well. He's interviewed Avi Loeb, who I went to his house and interviewed him. And Tim apparently is really, in, or I'm sorry, Lex is apparently interested in space as well. So help me get an interview with Lex Friedman. I think that it would be really cool considering we're both in the same city and um, I would love to hear his thoughts. Um, and kind of turn the tables on him and interview him since he's the uh, interviewer uh, so often. So Dave Avery wants to know if I'm using OBS. I'm not. I'm using StreamYard, uh, which I have enjoyed because we can, you know, switch on these comments. And to me, it looks better than Zoom. But yeah, I, I pay for a StreamYard subscription. So yeah, Tim, update before. <laughs> yeah. Three hour interview of Ellie with Lex. Like you guys, if you can help me make this happen, like we're both here in Austin, it would be so cool. Please help me make it happen. Um, Gerald says maybe regular weekly guests like James Dalma and Scott Walter. Absolutely. Um, I was thinking of them as well as Jonathan McDowell. So I'll see if they will agree to that. But yeah, let me let me get some things scheduled. And do you hear the scratching? There's more scratching. Um, if you pay, you can take the watermark off. I do pay. Farney, I do pay for this. So let's see if I can take it off. Uh huh. -huh. Layout. That's not it. Yeah, I'm gonna have to play around with this, but um, didn't know that you could take that off. And now he's meowing. <laughs> okay, you guys, so you heard it. So that, that is my dilemma. It's like, maybe I just need to lock him like in my bathroom to my bedroom, which is not near my office. I don't know, have several different doors of separation. He's very needy. He wants to be a part of these, but he's like, he's chaotic. He's chaotic. Um, oh, this video has no tags for what it's worth. Okay. Um, oh, someone wants me on their podcast? Uh, do tell more. Uh, definitely open to that for sure. Um, okay, so I guess I can take the StreamYard thing off in a setting. So, yes, so we are improving production value one step at a time, but I'm really glad that I got the camera thing figured out because that, that was just like an easy upgraded upgrade that needed to happen a long time ago. So anyway, 
for real this time. I hope that you guys have a great night. I'm going to try to get some special guests for some more live streams. And I really appreciate your participation as well in these live streams. You guys always have so many questions. It kind of surprises me. There's usually more questions than I can even keep up with. So it's awesome. And I really appreciate it. And I hope that you guys have an awesome night. All right. I'll see you soon.